What's well, going on, man? Off, what? First off, I um, want to say thank you. Um, you and Zach has showed me a lot. I kind of started watching you guys last week. Um, I watched you guys for probably about three days. Then I went and got my first contract the next day. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So I did driving for dollars in my, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. So, um, but I'm more on the outskirts of it. So Jefferson, Morristown, that area. Um, I got my first contract. Then I got another contract yesterday. I'm having a hard time comping around this area just because one house could be the same everything bed and bath and square feet and everything but one could be you know 200,000 one would be 250 one could go up to 280 it's just Correct. I'm trying to I'm having a hard time finding comps if I'm having a hard time finding comps is there another way I could find uh, you you're talking about regular single family houses right right so are you are you in more of a uh, rural area where it's spread out? Yeah, yeah, kinda. So that's going to be the challenge whenever you get out of a decentralized population. Where like, <clears throat> so the more houses you have, the easier it is to comp. That's why. So what's the population of the town where you're doing business? I would say probably less than fifty. Yeah. So that's that is the challenge, and that's why we technique. It doesn't mean there's not value <clears throat> in these properties, but number one, you have less comps to get a solid number. And number two, you have less um, desire for the property. You don't get that demanding um, overload yeah. um, response. So what you need, your biggest asset when you get these is you need more time than the average person doing. So if you understand you need more time, you just got to build it into your offers on your inspection periods because doing like a seven, 10 day or 14 day inspection is going to put a lot of stress on you in the beginning. Yeah. The reality is once you start doing them, you'll start to find the trend and you'll find like a baseline you can work with and you've got to understand Understand. you're probably going to have to give up a few contracts to figure that out so i'm finding the buyers and I'm, i feel like i'm doing the arv pretty good because um, uh -huh. when the buyers tell me what their arv it's around the arv i'm but one one buyer will say well i want to do a full rehab on it like for the first contract has an unfinished basement mm -hmm. then he said he'd want to finish that basement then the other buyer was like well i'd just you know put some lipstick upstairs and rent it out yeah. So I, you, you got to try to categorize. So the, the problem with these houses is I've always, I always try to categorize either this one's going to my landlord um, buyer base or this one's going to my fix and flip. Okay. And then one will go to like maybe retail MLS, which we'll do a wholetail. The problem is when you try to cross pollinate, which you kind of have to in a small, po smaller population. You can't make a reaction because one person tells you what well, they want to fix up the whole thing. And by the way, buyers have some like crazy ideas and you guys know exactly what I'm talking about on this live. It's like, and the problem with buyers right now is they're very difficult on their ARVs. So you might comp thing out at like 210,000. They're like, I wouldn't pay more than a hundred for that. And you're like, yeah, that's. and sometimes I don't even want to ask why I just have to move on because I couldn't even buy it below that. So why am I going to waste time doing it? And a lot of them are just strutting and doing stuff like that. And I get rid of those as soon as I can. I had someone tell me the other day, I will only buy stuff that's 50 cents on the dollar, less the repairs. I'm like, dude, you call me when you get them. I'll buy them too. You're never going to find that because you're going to have to spend a fortune to find those kind of deals. So the best cure you can get for like what you're doing is pay the least amount as you at least get it under contract for the least amount you possibly can. So you can go out and find a cash buyer and make that spread. So I was talking to someone yesterday and he kept focusing on like the buyer wanted, I, I know he wants 120,000. I said, how did you come up with that number? And he used to say to me like, well, I think that's what he wants. I'm like, you have no idea what they want. You had, so you guys putting numbers in your seller's head, it's you just go for the no, just go, build a rapport, go for the no and get it for the lowest price possible. And by the way, if you want to give seller extra money, which I've done plenty of times just because it's, so if I'm making a huge profit and they almost gave the property away from to me, I'm going to do something extra. I either going to send my person to the closing with a nice big fat gift. Maybe it's a, uh, a gift card to a grocery store or something like that, or I've given sellers an extra five grand because I made so much money. It was like embarrassing. I go, man, I know they're going to go back and look at this. I'm just going to do the right thing now because they didn't give me a hard time at all. And I'm just telling you, like, just make sure you go for the lowest possible number, Jared. Like, you're still going to have to have an estimate of the ARV. But once you have that in your head and when you talk to them, go for the no, because then you're going to find out what their bottom line number is and you can start a negotiation from that point. So many people are trying to negotiate to get their first contract accepted as a yes. And it's a huge mistake. It's a disaster waiting to happen because then you got to. So if the ARV is 210 and you offer like 190 
and they reject you, where are you going to go from there? You have nowhere to go other than out the front door. So just make sure you use it. I know it's you guys, uh, you know, someone told me, you go, well, that's gimmicky. I go, well, give me your solution. Like, what are you going to do? Ask them what's your lowest price you'll take and then keep beating them up on that. I used to do that when it started and it was a huge numbers game. And, it's, and now like it's the easiest way to get to their counter offer and build rapport while you're doing it. So okay. um, I don't have a solution for the ARV. I wish I had like this magic formula because I have the same access you do. But okay. understanding all you have to do is find out what your buyers will pay for it. And as long as you're getting the lowest contract price possible by having that upfront conversation, you can go to your cash buyers, you can market your contract and you can find the best spreads humanly possible. But if you're constantly on like slightly below that ARV line, it's going to be painful in this current market. And guys, yeah. this market's sticking around for 2023 and probably half of, if not all of 2024. So it's not going anywhere. So you need to adjust now. Here's the good news. The bad news is out in the media. You, I can't, you can't watch a media thing which is talking about how interest rates are climbing and how bad it's going to affect the real estate market. So after the holidays, people are going to have a change because now they're looking at 12 months of payment on a house they don't want. And those are the properties I want to buy. Not every deal is a wholesale. It's okay. But I love what you're doing. Just you got to put the best price forward, meaning get it as cheap as possible, market the crap out of it, and then find the people to pay the spreads. And hopefully you have more wins than losses. If you have more losses than wins, it means you're paying too much for the properties. Okay. And honestly, I have, I have... that that's that's the game plan for wholesaling, guys. Everyone trying to do 70% ARV, like my repairs, that's ridiculous. Take every property you can get like that because that's a no-brainer rule, right? Like if somebody offers you a free uh, uh a steak and a lobster dinner for 50% of the value, eat it. Don't, don't think about it. Don't analyze it. Just do it. If somebody offers you a property of 70%, it's a true ARV 70%, buy it, put it under contract and sell it to a cash buyer because there should be plenty of money to make that work. The problem is if you live and die by that formula, you're probably going to get very few deals for all it's of Is 80% percent more realistic right now? So um, I did a video. When did I do that video? I think I did it. Um, I did it with Zach. I did a video on, and we did this under freewholesaling.com is the reality is the formula gets skewed because some people minus off the repairs. Uh, they take 70% and then some people minus off their repairs or they add them back in. If you do it, it has a huge impact on the number that comes out. So I just released a video on it. It's a simple form. I did it. When did I do it? I did it last week and I went through the entire math of how to do it correctly. Cause the reality okay. is if you do it 70% is a no brainer guys, if you can take it, run with it. The reality is when the market got hot, we went as high as 83%. That's way too high in today's market. You're going to rely between somewhere between 70 and most likely 78%. The numbers go up in a hot market. They go down in a soft market. And that's just the truth of it. The reality is it always comes down to the repairs of the house. And that's where most people screw it up. So if a house is worth 200,000, say it needs 20, 30 grand worth of repairs. Here's the easy way to do it. Take the ARV of 200, go build report and offer them a hundred nice. Like, Hey, would, would you consider a hundred and shut up and see how they respond to you? And if you don't get kicked out of the door and they give you a counter, now you can start an intense negotiation without spending four weeks trying to figure out how to get to that number. And that's all that's I try to my, do. Guys, trying to get a yes, is. trying to get a yes on your first offer is this is what gurus teach. I don't teach this stuff. The reality is if I make 10 offers, probably nine of them are going to be turned down instantly. I'm okay right. with it. I don't want to buy. I don't want to buy properties for the most amount. That's called a realtor. I am not a realtor. That's what so, my first uh, contract is. ARV is 200. Then repairs is, I'd say 25 to 30, but I got it under contract for 115. Yeah. So, so uh, have you sold that contract yet? I have. I got a guy looking at it as we speak right now. Okay. And so how much are you going to make on it? Probably five. Okay. Hey, dude, that's a win. Just starting out. I'm telling you, man. So I had a, <laughs> it's actually a kiwi, but I go, yeah, how, how can I make a celebrity? Uh, noise and like cheer it on and like I, I'm a big boat guy so I like uh, you know like you find air horns annoying I do let me see <laughs> So I don't do bells. I have one more question though. Um, Shoot. So I have a realtor that has been throwing me a lot of stuff. Then she saw one of my contracts and she has a buyer that's coming to look at it today, possibly too. It's my second contract. <clears throat> so uh -huh. when the realtor gets involved like that, 
um, like you were saying right before I hopped on to the last lady about yeah. the realtor and uh, assignments and stuff, who pays the realtor's commission in that in that uh so is property listed it's uh no it's it's my it's my contract so it's wide open so if you want to pay the realtor you can you can add an addendum into your uh assignment of contract under uh you know the other section and just say uh or you just uh, i believe we have uh 14 paragraphs in there you can put 15 and handwrite it in there um john smith for uh realtor by the seas is entitled to a one two percent commission of the or i just put in the number i owe them two thousand dollars for finding this buyer if it successfully closes and you just write it in there and you give a copy to the realtor make them feel real good about it but okay it would be in the assignment of contract and it's whatever you negotiate so i don't like to put percentages but some realtors are like a little bit weird about this and let me explain this to you, you. said three percent correct so everything's negotiable but like if if, if they're getting you a good premium and it works for you, then great. Realtors only talk in percentages. Investors talk in cash numbers. And so just make sure whatever number it is, you put it in there in writing so it can't be manipulated. Okay. And so uh, on- also some realtors like you. So say I'm selling a property uh, to a realtor's client for 200000 Sometimes they like you to put the commission on top of the price and add it in, and then you got to pay it out of your side. So just find out if they want the title company to pay them on the HUD, which in my opinion is the preferable way, or sometimes you have to pay them directly. Most realtors don't trust investors to do that, but most of mine like me to do that. And then I just give them, um, well, it's just a 1099 if they do it that way, but most of them are paid through an LLC. So in the assignment contracts, just spell it out and I would put a number on it. And remember, everything's negotiable. If a realtor is making you a ton of money and they made it super easy, then I'd pay them the most that you can afford to do. If they were difficult and they're negotiating everything, make sure you do it back. Okay. And and also in your and Zach's uh, purchase and sell agreement, um, I know, well, one of the um, sellers notices it says sellers agrees to furnish title insurance. Is that for end buyers closing costs or how does that work? So the, the contract's somewhat generic because we have 30 3,500 counties, 50 yeah. states. There's no way to spell it all in one contract. So that's why we tell you always take it by your local title company to review your PSA. Sure. The reality of all real estate, everything's 100% negotiable. So like, here's the crazy part. I'm in the state of Florida and the three counties I do a majority of my business is one county is customary for the buyer to pay for the title insurance. And then I go to the county to the south and it's the opposite. The seller pays for it. The key okay. word is customary. I'm not a realtor, nor do I want to be a realtor, but you do have to explain this stuff on contract. And let me give you an example. In your purchase and sale of contract, if you agree to pay for closing costs, if you just say, I'm going to pay all your closing costs, you guys can get in a lot of trouble with that statement because your seller doesn't understand what that means. They're like, oh, great. I'm selling the house for hundred grand. I get hundred grand. No, no, no. It's less your mortgage. It's less your accrued property taxes, and it's less the state's recording fees plus the settlement fee. Most of you guys mean to say, I will pay for the cost of the title company's fees. But a lot of you guys put blank statements in there and you can do that. If you're getting a great deal, then you can do it. But the problem is some people owe, uh, they owe three to five years of back property taxes, which um, the seller thinks you were going to pick it up and it screws up your deal. And keep in mind, we are selling these contracts, right? So whatever you agree with the seller, your new cash buyer is going to take over your position. The more advantageous you make that contract, the more you get paid. When I have a seller who will not bend on price and I need some more play, I will tell them they have to pay all their customary closing costs, period. I don't care. And they're like, fine, that's that's what I want. I'm like, okay. That means they're going to pay half the title fees. Um, sometimes they, uh, they're they going to pay, I'm sorry, half the closing fees from the title company. They're going to pay all their prorated taxes. They're going to pay their recording fees. And then they're going to pay the title insurance. Guys, okay. most of these fees add up between 2 and 3% of the total um, cost of the transaction. So now if I got them to agree and I had to pay a little bit higher price, guess what? I can induce my cash buyers to go with my contract. Do you know why? Because I just lowered their cost three to four thousand dollars, and I emphasize that in my contracts. And it's not really an advanced technique; it's just you got to know how to like phrase it. So many of you go out there right off the bat. I'll pay all your closing costs before you even know what the price is. Don't do that. Don't do that. Always 
trade. Okay, I tell you what, if you can take my offer for $85,000, I'll commit to pay your closing title company fees and the title insurance, but we have to do it now. And they'll say, what does that mean? And you just explain it to them. On average, that's about 2% of the transaction. And they go, no, 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 I don't care. Like some people, they want to pay their fees, let them pay their fees. I don't care. If somebody gives me such a smoking deal, I make it very clear. But I tell them it's less, uh, it's stipulating the contract. It's less any liens on the property, but like paying all closing costs is a very vague statement. So on average, you're giving up 3% of the deal when you say that. And you need to be aware okay. of it when you do it, especially in a soft market. So it's all negotiable. Eventually you spell it on the contract. And here's all I know is when you go to the closing, sellers will hold you accountable for what you say much more than what you put in writing. Cause that's all they remember. So you remember you ever tell you go, okay, uh, Jared, here's what we're going to do. We're going to meet uh, Saturday at like eight o'clock and uh, you're going to bring a hundred dollars and we're going to figure this thing out. And you go, okay, Saturday, 8 a.m., a hundred dollars. And you get there, you show up at nine. I show up at nine. You're pissed. It was eight. And then I said, where's that $500? And you go, now you said a hundred. I go, well, I have something in writing that says otherwise. You're like BS. Like I like punch you in the face yeah. type of deal. Right? So you got to yeah. understand sellers only remember your verbal contract. I'm just telling you always put it in writing. Cause you got to cover your bases. But in the end, they will hold you to your verbal contract all the way to the seller's table, all the way to the closing table. So always I, make sure you honor it. I think I kind of overlooked that part about the title insurance. That it, you, you're learning. It's, it's okay. You're learning. Yeah. So another way you can find out if you want to know what's custom in your city, in your, your county, go to your title company, go, Hey, who normally pays for title insurance? That's who what pays I asked. For this? Yeah. And then you'll find out like this customary word. That's not in my language. There's nothing we do is customary, not even close. By the way, guys, everything in real estate is negotiable down to the last brick on the house, to the furnishings, everything, the fees, everything's negotiable. Customary. This is what 98% of the world does when they do a real estate transaction. You are not that person as a wholesaler and you have to understand it. So when you go to a regular title company, they're not used to working with wholesalers. They're going to treat you like 98% of the rest of the population. And you do you know how most title companies process when you're going to close on a contract? I don't. They look at your um, closing date on your contract and they assume that's the date you're going to close. That to you and me, that's our worst case scenario. I don't want that to come true. I want to get it done before then. So they don't start pulling titles sometimes till two, three weeks till after you give it to them because that's what they normally do. So I make my title companies pull title the minute I hand them the contract. I don't want a surprise. I want to figure it out as soon as possible. I, we got an agreement of when um, I find a, or when I turn in my assignment is when they'll start the title search. Yeah. But like, honestly, when you got good deals, most of the sellers know when there's an issue with the house. And then honestly, if you even have a suspect, you can pencil search it. But so many title companies, honestly, they rather get it out of the way so they can get your thing scheduled. It doesn't cost them a ton of money to run the title. Okay. And I I've only paid a few title companies because um, they, do, they <clears throat> do just a simple title search. And remember, they get thousands of searches a month. So it's not that big deal. So they got to print some paperwork and they have to commit to an employee. I get it. They don't want to waste people's time. So, but please don't have them wait too long to run title because if seven or 10 days goes by for you to get an assignment and you say you enter that assignment and you find a title problem it's a nightmare to unwind because now you what happens if i what happens if i have them do the title search but i i want to back out the contract because i can't find a buyer and they've already done the title search they just eat the title so it, it's up to your relationship with them i get it like they don't want to waste time and you don't want to burn through fees so whatever you need to do but sometimes that will blow up on you because we buy problem properties and stuff comes up all the time and then you have to unwind a deal because you can't deliver a clear title. So you just like find the balance on it. Most title companies, they're not going to come back and give you a $200 fee for running a title. So if they ran 10, 12 title searches in a month for you and you closed four or five deals, they're fine with that. It's the people okay. that run title searches and they never intend on closing. They're the ones that are like, dude, I'm not doing this anymore. But I'd sure. rather find okay. out sooner or later. So on average, in my state where I am, it takes about three days to come back to figure out what's going on with title. And guys, I've had some wild surprises. I'm not a title researcher. I just want to know if it's going to easily convey if there's a problem. And a lot of you go, well, there's no problem. I see they did this. Whenever there's a quick claim deed with someone married, it can be problematic. 
automatic. Whenever there's a power of attorney, when the taxes aren't paid correctly, there could be a lot of things that pop up. And for those of you that work the code violation list, it's even more important on that one. So um, you're doing the right way. Just keep going and work with your title company. If the agreement you have with the title company is working out, like don't change it. I'm just letting you know when you work with a title company, they become like part of your team. And the sooner, yeah. in my opinion, the sooner you can find out a problem, the better. And then the idea is if you close more than that fail, you'll do fine. So on average, we get about 20% of ours that we either we have a title problem or we literally just couldn't find a buyer for it and we get out of it. So okay. two out of 10 is not bad. So when you kind of run the numbers is I just don't want someone that you put in all that hard work. There's nothing worse when a title issue comes up because that buyer gets really pissed at you. And like you got to explain to them, like, can you just wait like a month or two? I'll get it fixed. And they usually don't wait. They get irritated. So uh, just to kind of let you know. You'll figure How do it I out. send you guys um, a message because th in case I can't get a buyer to see if you guys can kind of look at the deals and see if we can JV or something? So we're, we're kind of redoing how we do the whole JV thing. So yeah. your exact scenario I'm going to use and like, don't take it personally, but I'm just going to sure. show you. That's the trying to deal we're trying to avoid. Because here's okay. the truth of the matter is if you get it under contract, you have more than enough skill sets through me and Zach to do it and you can't find a buyer. And are you doing this locally or virtually? I'm locally. Yeah. What do you think my odds are? Where are you located? Which market again? Knox, Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah. What do you think my odds of pulling a buyer out in Knoxville, Tennessee to close a deal, like to get a deal done in like less than 10 days or two weeks? They're slim. Not good. And that's the problem, guys. This cost me money and time. And I don't want to research deals that you guys couldn't make work. So okay. we're going to change our commitment process and how we do it and find a way to work with you guys directly. But the problem is I can't have you selling it. I can't be selling it. It creates mass confusion and everybody gets upset and I don't want to be like stuck in there. Um, there's got to be a better way to do this. So what we're doing now is if you have a really good deal and you want to work with us from day one and it's like a really good deal, I'll walk you through on how to do the transaction. You can send us an email at support at flip with Rick and put in the title of the address and we take a look at everything. But I can't like, honestly, guys, I, we've been sorting through thousands and thousands of leads and we do, we do deals, but like it's, if I had to tell you how much time and money you have to spend and then I tick off employees and stuff like that, I'd rather be more prolific because a lot of people do exactly what you say they try two weeks to sell it and then they give us a week to sell it and i just don't want to run around with my head cut off like that it's too hard especially in today's market I they got to be smoking deals and we can't have multiple people marketing at the same time it's just too difficult I respect that. So, so if you have well, one just send an email it. and then we'll talk from there so you said support at flip with rick yeah just just put okay. in the title put the address and put your name in parentheses next to it and i promise you we'll look at it all right sounds good okay Thank man you. i appreciate it guys does that make sense if you guys can't sell the deal I, me from like a 1500 miles away, I'm going to have the same, same issue. 